Hello everyone, my name is Ronnie Rios, and in this video we'll explore one of the defining new features of Claris FileMaker 19, add-ons. We'll look at how to use, create, and even how to share add-ons. I think it's important to note that some of the things that we'll be talking about here today, like the add-on creation process, which includes the new save a copy as an add-on package script step, have been released as preview. This, however, does not mean that it is in beta or that it has not been tested. It means we want to put these features out in the community, listen to your feedback, and then make the appropriate changes to deliver the best possible experience. In addition, while creating add-ons is in preview, using add-ons is not, which means that once an add-on is installed, it should work in the app as expected without any changes. In order to provide you the tools to create the best modern app experiences, Claris has a vision to make powerful technologies available to everyone. Powerful technology means things like cloud and artificial intelligence and JavaScript, the technology that your customers require in their modern apps. And we want to make sure that the power of cloud smart technology is available not just in the cloud, but also on every device, on-premise and even offline. Low-code technology should be accessible to all users but also extensible by developers. So, powerful technologies available to everyone. Claris FileMaker 19 is our first open platform, allowing developers to extend the platform with shareable add-ons, making it even faster for anyone to build modern apps. Add-ons are reusable and shareable modular components that you can create to easily add more functionality to your apps. They can include things like scripts, custom functions, tables, data, and even entire layouts. But they can also have an object that users can drag and drop onto their own layouts. Add-ons can be simple controls like switches and sliders and star rating, as well as feature-rich things like Kanban boards, photo galleries, barcode generators, and more. An add-on package is a collection of files, mostly JSON and XML. To make an add-on available to use in FileMaker Pro, simply place the add-on package in the add-on modules folder and restart FileMaker Pro. These are the locations of the add-on modules folder in both Mac and Windows. To install an add-on into a FileMaker custom app, click on the add-on installation button in the add-ons pane while in layout mode. Then select the add-on and click on the Choose button. This copies all the components of the add-on into the app. If there's a drag-and-drop object, you can now simply drag it onto the layout from the add-ons pane and configure if necessary. To uninstall, simply right-click the add-on from the add-ons pane, select the uninstall option, confirm, and all the components, including drag-and-drop objects in the all layouts, will be removed from the app. An add-on package is created by taking a FileMaker file and converting it into an add-on package. This process involves three basic steps. First, creating a FileMaker file. Second, placing everything you'd like the add-on to have, like scripts, tables, and layouts, into that file. And finally, performing the Save a Copy as Add-on Package script step, which will generate the add-on package from the contents of the FileMaker file. You can create the FileMaker file in just about any way you like. Be sure to name the file what you'd like the add-on to be named. Now, add-ons are internally identified by the file ID of the file that they are based on. So if you're going to create the add-on from a copied or a duplicate FileMaker file, you may want to give this file a unique file ID by using the Reset All button in the File Access tab under Advanced Security Settings. Next, add all the elements you'd like the add-on to have into this file. Elements can be things like value lists, custom functions, scripts, tables, and even entire layouts. 
If we want the add-on to have a layout object that the user can drag and drop onto their own layouts, then we'll have to place that object in a special layout to indicate to the add-on generator that only that object, and not the entire layout, be included in the add-on package. To do this, first we'll need to create one or more layouts with special names. The layouts will have a special prefix. That's two underscores at the beginning. And to support the ability to have slightly different drag and drop objects for different languages, we'll append a language code to the layout name. So here are a few examples of possible layout names. Now, create all the layout objects just as you want them to appear. Then group the objects. This is required. Any ungrouped objects on the special layout will be ignored by the add-on generator. On the special layout, you can put anything you want as long as there is only one object group. If there is more than one object group, the add-on generator will pick one and ignore the others, unless they are one of the special groups. One of the special groups allows us to create relationships dynamically during the add-on's installation. To define a one-to-many relationship, place the foreign key field object on the layout. Give this field object a name with the following format, where relationship prefix is any arbitrary text. Here's a quick example. Now create an object group with the foreign key field and any other object except for the drag and drop group. A good practice is to use the field's text label as part of this group. Then give this new group a name with the following format, where relationship prefix matches the one used in the foreign key field's object name. Here's what that might look like. Now let's briefly look at an example in practice. I'll start by dragging the foreign key field's object onto the layout. Now I'll name the object, and as a prefix I'll use something simple, maybe just the word review. Then I'll create a group using the field's text label. Now I'll name the group, remembering to use the same prefix text. Let's see what this add-on would look like if we installed it on this app. This app currently has two tables. And this layout is based on the customer's table. I will add the add-on and drag it onto the layout. The relationship is dynamically created using the customer's table primary key field candidate. In this case, customer number. There are two special tags that can greatly help when building more robust logic into your add-ons. When an add-on object is dragged and dropped onto a layout, any occurrence of these tags in that instance's script parameters and object names will be replaced with the object's instance UUID and the layout's primary key candidate at the time, respectively. Let's look at a quick example of this. In this add-on source file, 
we've placed the add-on instance UUID tag in the button's name. As we can see, the button has been defined to perform a simple script which will display any data received as a parameter in the dialog box. The parameter that's being sent to the script is a JSON object containing both the add-on instance UUID and the layout primary key tags. As we can see, when running the script here in the source file, the tags are unchanged. Now let's see what happens when we install the add-on in an app. The first thing we can notice is that the button's name has been replaced with a unique identifier. When we click the button, we see that the tag in the script parameter has also been replaced. And as we can see here, Every instance will be reprocessed and its tags replaced as it's being dropped onto the layout. As we said before, the third and final step in creating an add-on is to perform the save a copy as add-on package script step. So let's briefly talk about this script step. It has two parameters. First, the window name. This is the name of a window of the file that the add-on package will be based on. And second, the replace UUIDs. If this option is on, new UUIDs will be generated for all internal elements of the, of the package. These UUIDs are used to identify the components of the add-on and used, among other things, during the uninstall process. It is recommended for now that this option be set to on. To avoid including a script with this script step in the generated add-on package, one of two methods may be used. The first would be to run the script step from a separate file. In this case, button with a single step. The window parameters you can see is being driven by a local field. We can populate that field with a value list that gathers the name of all the open windows. When the script step is performed, the add-on package is generated and immediately placed in the add-on modules folder, ready to be used. The other method involves using an ungrouped button in one of the special layouts. Because the add-on generator ignores any object in the special layouts that is not grouped, we can safely place a single step button here for a more self-contained approach. Once again, performing the script step generates the add-on package, which is saved in the add-on modules folder automatically. As we mentioned before, an add-on package is a collection of files. Here's a list of some of those files with a brief description. You may want to edit or even replace some of these in order to customize your add-on before sharing with others. There is another important file in the package called template.xml. It contains the scripts, layouts, tables, and other elements that will be created in the file when the add-on is installed in a FileMaker custom app. It is highly recommended not to modify this file. Now that you've created an add-on, you're likely going to want to share it with others. Although not necessary, you may want to compress the add-on package to make it easier to handle. Then, 
Simply share like any other file using your favorite method like email or a file sharing service. If you receive a compressed package, simply decompress and place the package in the add-on modules folder. Restart FileMaker and enjoy the add-on. We hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.